In this video, we'll make a leprechaun gnome. Keep watching. I'm going to start off with some supplies that I got from the thrift store. These are some cake pan liners or something of the sort that you make your cakes on. Then I have these already cut, perfectly sized pieces of fur, a little knob for the nose, and these hands and feet and the hat came off of a, just a paper piece, a decorative piece, and I pulled the arms and legs pieces off. So first I'm going to lay it out because I didn't have any inspiration for this. This came right out of my head. So I was trying to decide exactly how I wanted him to look. The positioning of his arms. Did we want him waving? Did we want him reaching out for a hug? How he wanted to do it. So now I'm just measuring with this hat how far down I want to put this on his body. And I'm going to do a little cutout here. Just tracing that with a pencil, going to go back with my scissors or rotary blade and just trim that out. I don't want this to be flimsy, so rather than using just, you know, construction paper or something like that, this cardboard is going to make a stronger base. I want this little leprechaun to last for a very long time. He's so cute. Okay, now that we've got the base of his body figured out. Now we're going to trim out where I need to cut his beard. So I've just done that using that cardboard piece to trace it. You could use foam board if you don't have these uh, little cake stand, whatever these things are. And then I'm just wiping away the little hair that is coming off where I cut. And we're going to start gluing this down. I got a new glue gun. I left my other one on too long and it clogged up, so got a sure bonder and I'm loving it so far. Okay, just cover that thing with glue and lay that down as well as you can. I didn't have it all the way to the edges, but I was surprised to see that the back of this fur is actually a little bit stretchy, so I was able to move that around just a little bit before the glue dried. Okay, so far so good. Now we need to think about his hat. Okay. Kind of flimsy though. Not going to give us very much durability, so I'm going to just use another piece of... I think this piece actually came out of a calendar that I got from Dollar Tree. Pretty sure it did. I save all that stuff because you never know when a project like this may come up. This way you don't have to run to the store and get anything. You can piece together what you need. So I've traced this and I'm cutting inside of that line to make it a little bit smaller. I don't want the cardboard poking out and then decided to just cut that bottom piece off because it's going to be supported by the body. So we don't really need that part. I'm going to add the glue and make sure that I put this on correctly. Pat it down so there's no bubbles in my hat on the other side. And eyeballing where we're going to need to put that glue before we put this down. I just don't want to take a chance in getting too fast on this and getting sloppy and messing up his beard. Gingers have enough problems, I can say that because I am one. Okay, we want him to look dapper. This is going to be this is going to be my dapper Dan leprechaun or dapper dawn that's even better giving him a little trim there where his hair is poking out and i'm liking the way this looks so far i really like it i think this is going to give me a good idea guys i've never made a gnome of any sort this is my very first time all right so we're going to use little popsicle sticks for his to support his hands and to attach his um I guess to make him a little arm to attach to his body. You could also attach this straight to the cardboard underneath, but again, it's gonna be kind of floppy and I want this to be secure, nice and sturdy. So he's gonna be coming in for a hug. That's where we're gonna put his arms, down a little bit more on his sides. Maybe he's dancing, we don't know. 
He's a leprechaun. He might really be liking this music. My daughter said it sounded like leprechaun music, so I decided to put it on this video. So that's for my little girl. I've already got one boot on. Now we're going to put the other one on. And because he's going to be hanging, I'm just going to leave those boots attached right there with no extra support. It's the bottom of his body. Shouldn't get much much uh, disturbance down there. Okay, we want to make sure that we pick all of his fuzzies out of his beard. We want a clean beard. And watch how I make this mustache. How simple is this? Just going to take your fingers right in the center of his little face there and just start brushing or sweeping that to the side. How simple is that? I didn't even need to get a second layer out, another sheet. So it's perfect. I love it. He needs a little uh, handlebar mustache. See, he's dapper. Now I'm going to use this Elmer's glue stick as like a hair gel and I'm going to fix his little mustache. I think men who have mustaches use like a wax of some sort. So this is going to be his mustache wax. Now we're going to put his nose on right in the center of that little mustache. Above into the center so that it's right next to that hat. Looks like it's poking out from under the hat. Oh my gosh, guys, look at that. Ah! So cute. I couldn't stop playing with this mustache. We're going to do the same thing for the beard because we want him to look nice instead of unkempt. So there we go. Now his little beard is all in shape. We're going to start working with a little bit of extra embellishment on his hat. So I'm going to take some of this wired burlap ribbon. You can do a very simple bow here if you want, just like this. You can put it right over that buckle or on the top if you would like. Simple, simple. But I felt like he needs a little bit of something extra. So I'm going to give him a funky bow. And this is how you make a funky bow. You just make a loop, pinch it in the middle. I think I have um, like a foot and a half of each piece of this ribbon. Just as long as you've got them the same length, that's kind of what you're aiming for. So that your bow and the little tails that stick out are gonna be about the same length. And you'll see what I mean once we start fluffing a bow out. But for now, let's get this all trimmed up. I'm cutting these at a little slant. You can do dovetails or anything that you like here. I'm gonna do the same thing with the green burlap ribbon. And both of these ribbons came from Dollar Tree. Pinch it in the middle, and I'm just using a clip to hold it there in place. Now there's no wire in this ribbon and it came from the thrift store, but I'm going to show you how to make it a little more sturdy because you see how floppy that is? If you tried to put that in that arrangement and you tried to fluff your bow, it would just lay flat. It wouldn't give you any type of body whatsoever. See? These have defined loops. You can see how they stand apart, but when you look at this, not so much. All you have to do is cut another piece of ribbon that does have wire, like burlap ribbon, and that's going to be the backing for this. It gives it a nice look also. Just run your glue down it, be very careful. I should have had my finger protectors on, but didn't. Then you want to lay this down where you have even amounts on the sides, so you know, just so that it looks like it was made that way. Nice and neat. I'm just trimming those off at an angle. And look at that, a nice structured piece to add to that bundle of bows. Well, bundle of ribbons. So we're going to just alternate. It really doesn't matter. You don't have to do this, but when you're fluffing it out, it just kind of spaces things apart just a little bit. And I find that helpful. So you're gonna use one of each, two burlap, two green burlap, and two of the clover. And then you're just gonna take a zip tie or a piece of pipe cleaner or some floor wire and cinch the middle. For the bigger bulkier things, I like to use these zip ties because it really holds it in there for you. Especially if you have small hands, this seems to be um, more helpful. Snip off the end because we're not going to need that piece for anything. 
then squash your bow down. You're going to sit it down, spread out the tails, and then start fluffing around the bow, and then you'll see. It always looks pretty rough in the beginning, but once you start moving things around and spacing them out, they really start to take a really pretty shape. So don't give up when you first start to make your bow and you think it looks crazy. It, it does get better. I'm just trimming off some pieces that I that looked a little rough on the edges and you can trim them off if you want things to look a little bit shorter, whichever way that you like. See, it's gonna be cute up there on his hat. And I decided I wanna cover up his buckle so that it matches his bow on his head. And I'm gonna do the same thing for that last piece of ribbon. I'm just gonna secure it with a piece of wired ribbon underneath and it matches nicely. It's coordinated. I feel like Dapper Don the Leprechaun appreciates a put together outfit. And so that's going to go right over that buckle. And we're going to place the bow where we think we might want it. Once you've eyeballed it and moved it around, go ahead and add a good bit of glue there and put it down on his hat where you would like for it to be. Then if it's not exactly how you wanted it, just keep fluffing. You can move all of that stuff around. It's the beauty of it. Big bows. I want to add a little something extra on the side here. So I've just taken this piece of garland that I've had for a few years. I think it came from the Target dollar spot. And since I didn't use it, didn't match what I normally use, I decided that it would be perfect for this little leprechaun gnome. I just added some glue and put it on the side of that bow there. It looks cute. Now I'm going to work on his little boots. Could have used the bright green pom-poms, but I switched over to the dark green. And now I wish I would have used the light green because these barely show up. But that's okay. That's all right. Just gonna glue those down. And I had these two little, I guess the little felt flowers from another little kit that I had. And I'm just gonna glue those on. I think they look nice to balance out that uh, clover on the other side. Now we gotta find some way to hang it up. So we're gonna put some glue here. And this just is just a bag handle that I already had. We're gonna recycle it and use it here and a piece of ribbon to put over the top. You put your glue down, put your rib, your well, your string there, add a little more glue on top of that, and then put the ribbon on top. Give your bow one last fluff, and here he is in all of his glory. Cutest little gnome leprechaun I've ever seen in my life. He's really cute. He makes me smile when I see him, so he is going to be around my house for a very long time. Maybe even past St. Patrick's Day. He's really cute. Let me know, are you planning on doing this project? There's all kinds of paper crafts with leprechauns at Dollar Tree that you could substitute. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.